Hello, dear friends. <laughs> I'm the fire sign Theater. Me and my three buddies here. And we'd like to talk to you for just a minute about what it means to be a member of the fire sign Theater and, and run the famous comedian school for all you fans out there in the audience. How do we do it so cheap? Well, it's easy, friends, because the fire sign Theater does anything for anybody at any time. So long, of course, as we have complete control. Well, we look upon ourselves as media bums. Uh, we all come from different countries, and therefore we represent a kind of cross-cultural influence, and we all got our start on local television, c cable TV in the 30s. And as you know, the Firesign Theater is, is doing its very best to convince all the wonderful, wonderful people out there that we are entering only into a period of economic impression, not depression. And we're here to laugh your blues away. Like in the 30s, stand up and sing. But stand up for yourself this time, dear friends. We prefer any mediums. We work in tape, styrofoam, uh, any kind of uh, oatmeal, anything you can get your hands into and kind of play with. Wouldn't you say that's right, Pete? Yes, dear friends. Thank you, Phil. The Firesign Theater is a, a media experience, a, a, a traveling, juggling troupe of madmen, or perhaps you might term us like about... that makes me cry. Yeah, or we're, I don't know, we're on TV in, right now. Yeah, we're on TV. Yeah, we're, true. This is on TV right now, and that's sort of what we are. In times of unemployment, we, we try to create uh, work for ourselves. Yes, it's great fun being a radio disc jockey and a member of America's most beloved underground comedy group. It's done wonders for me. My body's in great shape now. I'm dressed in pretty snappy. My blues have been rocked away. Wouldn't you agree with me, Phil Austin? Hi, I'm Les Thompson, and here it is, the big number one on the Boss 30. Uh, <laughs> my name is George Plimpton, and I've made a, a great success out of records because uh, people are free to buy them or not to buy them. There's no, you don't have to worry about turning off the, uh, the record player, the television set. I mean, there's no, there's no decision to get up off the bed. Uh, if you buy a record, you're generally going to listen to it. That's why we've, we've worked with uh, uh, Columbia Records and put out Tell discs. Them. You know. Tell them about it, Don. Well, we're the Fire Sign Theater. That's Fire Sign, because there are four of us, and we're all Fire Signs. Astrologically speaking, there are uh, two Sagittariuses. I'm the right foot, and Peter Bergman here is the left foot. Hi. And uh, there's a Leo over there, the heart of our group, Philip Proctor. And Mr. Austin here is the head, or the, uh, the uh, brains. We got together from various pursuits in the entertainment industry and related fields. David Osman was once an executive at ABC and is still and was a poet, a writer. Uh, Phil Austin is a writer, a scholar, and an actor. Uh, Peter Bergman and Phil Proctor is an actor. And, oh, excuse me, Pete. Peter Bergman uh, is a radio personality from the early days of uh, uh, local Los Angeles radio. Thank you, thank you. I'm being prompted here by my friend, but uh, we do do a radio show and uh, have done for about four years. We, we all got together on the Radio Friage show initially, which was about four years ago, and did some improvisations live on the air to which people could respond by telephone. And no matter how far out the improvisations were, and they were very far out, the people responded uh, as though they believed everything that was being said, which gave us a certain clue to the direction of our humor. Also, another way of describing us is that we are we are a self-contained production unit. Mm -hmm. Within the four of us, we're we're kind of new in terms of the the entertainment, the media business that we're in, and we've had to make certain like the Writers Guild and people like that have to make certain adjustments with us because we operate in the same sense that people are used now to thinking of a rock and roll group operating mm -hmm. in the sense that we kind of all do everything. We are actually a group. We are actually the Fire Sign Theater, and our work. Uh, we perform on private stage too. Yeah, and we do everything we do. It's not privately authored. The the material is written by the Fire Sign Theater. It's performed by the Fire Sign Theater. We mm -hmm. produce ourselves. We direct ourselves. The movie, uh, uh, while well, our Mr. Wacko uh, will be producing it, in order to allow the rest of us to write, direct, act, and do everything that everybody in the business has always said that we'd never be able to do. Uh, and it's working out very successfully so far. Yeah. It certainly worked in terms of records. Uh, we've been able to self-produce, handle all our own business, we manage ourselves, uh, we live our own lives, and we're very happy. The, the, yeah. the, Bob, Sideburn, the Bob Sideburn News uh, is part of a uh, touring show that we've been presenting. I think we probably presented for the last time at uh, USC about a week ago. Many people don't realize this about newsmen, people involved in news, that it is an entertainment. There's nothing wrong with that. It's like roller derby. Mm -hmm. Roller derby, at least, 
up front somewhere in the program says this is an entertainment, not a real sports event. And I suppose if we're saying anything, we're saying that it would be nice that if the, if the news and pro football, for that matter, would say the same thing, then we'd all at least know what we're talking about, that these things are staged. That the news is an entertainment. Yes, I right. mean, Walter Cronkite and, and uh, George, you know, Putnam or Kevin Saunders or whoever your newsman may be is an entertainer. He's an actor. The national disaster doesn't happen to him. I'm an actor. A newsman is also an actor. A person who sells you soap in a commercial or sells you anything is an actor. It's all actors. Nothing wrong with that. No. Nope. But it's <laughs> no. not real. No. Television isn't real. And it's artificial. It's a god. This is a god. This is the television god. I'm speaking to you through the television god. What I say through the television god, if I'm a newsman, takes on an importance that perhaps is not justifiable. So when the newsman comes on, he's got to make himself as interesting as possible so that you won't switch and watch Fay Ray, right, and Hercules Strong Arms. The way he does that is to dramatize whatever he says. And the drama... One of the ways of doing that <laughs> is talking in these ways. Now, these men don't really talk like that. They don't. They are, they are orating, much like it's in a grand old American tradition of the 4th of July orator. And it is Ralph Williams, because if he can really get you going, right? If he yeah. can get you interested in the news, this car, now here's a blue news story, and here's a red news story, and here's a yellow news story, this comes complete with facts and drama, right? He wants to make you believe that there is such a thing as Vietnam, race riots, Negro problems, welfare, things that you say, well, of course, what's this man talking about? Of course those are real. I read about them all the time. But you don't see them. You don't know anybody that's starving. You've never met anybody. You've never met the news. The news is only brought to you by actors. The poor reporter is faced with having to fill a great deal of time. There is no news, but there's a large segment of time allotted for the news. And uh, I like those guys who go out there, and when the red light goes on, they talk for 10 minutes. I like to watch them. I enjoy it. And so that's why we did... Mickey, it's nice to see a guy making it in a very difficult situation, and news people do that too. The reality of this moment right now, like the news, is that Vic is taking a picture of me, and I, I change the way I'm talking to match that phenomenon. Walter changes, you change, everybody changes when they're in front of a camera, when they, when they know that a tape recorder is on, or even when they talk on the phone. Most people have phone voices. I'm talking to this camera right now, and I can see my reflection in this, in this orange filter, right? So everything I say is the truth only by being true. It's not, it's not real. It, it's not bigger than life. Just because I'm in your living room on your TV set <laughs> doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean anything. The man anything. behind the camera keeps squinting and closing one eye because right. he's looking through the machine, and he's also catching glimpses of the other reality through his left eye which is real. See, uh, are, are, is it his legs or the tripod that's holding up the machine that's projecting me through your machine into your home? And what's holding you up? It's all pretty funny, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> that's why we do it, you see, because it is all pretty funny. And the news now, you see, is good news. No matter what you see on it, it is good news. And uh, if our news is good, it, then it's funny news. And that's, uh, that's one other aspect, I think, of what the Firesign Theater is, is Good timey humorists. Yeah, right. Good, indeed. good old timey humorists. Yes, well, uh, Miss uh, said, D'Angelo. At the president. You said that uh, news is staged. Now, what do you mean by that? Ah. Ah. Why would I say that news okay, is staged? Okay, now. Okay, so. now. Apart, if. Uh, um, to amplify what I meant no, by you gotta, staged. You gotta, do oh, I have to repeat it? I was yeah, getting into it. You have to repeat the question. Okay. <laughs> I have to repeat the. Um, you asked I him news why is news is staged. Because some, you know, that way. If you could just run what we've just gone through <laughs> here right now, that would be it. I mean, if you could possibly do that. Just See, what we just went through with Vic's minute. voice, with everything like that, is now just exactly true. what I was talking about. Yeah, that, we are rolling. The Fire Sign Theater, if it's anything, because it is a group, because it has a superego, which is the four of us in agreement, it demonstrates that four free men or four free women who would make no difference can come together and be it each other's... Well, it would, would, make would, it would make a difference, yes. Charles. Go on. Especially, on. especially on. if they came together. Four, four free, uh, independent, conscious men can come together in each other's presence for a long time. We've been together for four years, almost daily and get closer and closer together and be able to be more and more free with each other and create more and more. 
And that's, I think, the lifestyle of the 70s. We're having a good time and we're free, just like you are. <laughs> Who's you? <laughs> Who am I talking to? <laughs> Who's that guy? <laughs> Mr. Aeroflex.